Hi everyone, this video is just going to take a quick look at mastery paths which are used in Canvas with conditional assignments. It's going to go through and just highlight a couple of key things to make sure that you complete as you are setting up mastery paths for your students. Within the PowerPoint that we've been looking at, there were several objectives and one of the things that I cannot stress enough to you is to start small with this. Pick that one particular topic that your students tend to struggle with because they're all coming in with a different set of information, a different set of prior knowledge in their heads. And so what we're trying to do on the front end is to assess that knowledge and then from there tier how we're going to help and support them in this learning objective. So the one that I showed you all in the professional development session earlier was a chemistry unit looking at the mole and molar masses and molar ratios. That skill actually goes back to something that students start seeing sometimes in the sixth grade, which is dimensional analysis, converting between various units. The number one thing to remember is that everything with a mastery path is based in a module. And so I always tell teachers, get your module set up, make sure that everything is linked to a mastery path. So what I mean by that is if you know you have a page for that low-level learner, they have not mastered the prior skills, you probably have created a content page to help them go back and review that information. What you have to make sure is that on that content page you have clicked allow and mastery paths. Um, if that button is not clicked then it is not something that you can add to a mastery path. So speaking from prior experience make sure that that button is clicked so that you can add that to your mastery path. The initial assignment I started with was just a simple little pre-assessment. So when we click here, we see it's eight questions long, eight points. And we come over here to edit where we're really going to see everything is under this mastery paths tab. The very first thing you want to make sure you do is set those score ranges. Um, I like to have a pretty small pre-assessment and not too big because as we know students will shut down very quickly on assessment if they feel they're not going to have any success. So keep it short, keep it sweet. If a student scored, you know, at mastery, I'm going to go ahead and say, you know what, you're ready to learn this topic. You're ready to learn about the mole. And so what I did is I hit the plus sign there. I chose the mole and this is actually a content page. And then you see there's a homework practice here, which is just a basic quiz that students would check their answers with. If students got four to five points, which means they got mm, a little over half of the questions correct, but there's definitely some gaps in their learning, I'm going to send them into the first step of remediation, which would be dimensional analysis. And so here we see a content page and then there's a quiz. So once they get um, at least eight points on this quiz, then this assignment up here is going to open up to them. Okay, so let's say on that initial assessment that they get just a couple, they only get three problems right or two problems right. They're going to be directed into that real basic level remediation where we're looking at those metric prefixes. So once again, there's a remediation content page and then once they're done with that remediation, they're going to come over here and take a quiz and once they hit eight out of ten, they'll be directed to dimensional analysis. Once they've mastered dimensional analysis, then they're going to open up into that mole homework. So that's kind of the overview there of what a mastery path page would look like. Within each one of those quizzes, there's a lot of different things that you can do with it. I'll be very honest, a lot of this is trial and error that I've done myself. Um, you can actually go into settings and turn this into student view so that you can see what the student sees. So for example, if I come over here into settings, and go into student view. Now what I'm looking at is this course as though I'm a student and I've logged on for the very first time. My teacher has told me to come down here to the unit 7 mole and stoichiometry unit and I'm going to take the unit 7 pre-assessment. And what you're seeing is that that student isn't overwhelmed by all those other assignments and tasks. It is very easy for them to follow. Once they take that assessment they're going to see something pop up down here and then that's the next step in their mastery path. We all understand that some students are going to need more time than others. Some are going to need that one-on-one -on -one teaching. They're not going to need a remediation page. Others, however, can move at a much quicker pace and you can actually go forward. And as you can see over here, you could unlock or, excuse me, publish a lot of things so that they could move at a much quicker pace um, than the rest of the students. 
one other thing I wanted to show you here was what one of those content pages looks like. So let's look at one of those remediation pages. If I'm a student and I scored in that middle range where I didn't, I wasn't quite ready um, to go into the mole homework, this is where I'm going to be directed. You see that there are several video tutorials of myself using a document camera explaining. This was again um, a skill that would have been practiced early on in chemistry in unit one. This is actually a skill that students would have seen on some level all the way back to sixth grade. And of course you see there's also that practice quiz there. So once they make that eight out of ten on that practice quiz, it's going to open up that mole homework for them. Do not be overwhelmed by mastery paths. Um, I know it can seem overwhelming at first, but it really does help us gauge where students are at and make sure that they're meeting those learning targets before they're moving on and progressing. Let me know. Uh, do not hesitate to reach out to me. Let me know if you have any questions whatsoever, and I hope this training has been beneficial for you.